Hello and welcome, and uh, thanks for joining us for another great episode of the Ruthless Pro Wrestling Podcast. Uh, I am one third of the commentary team. My name is Peapod. Thank you so much for joining us. Got another great episode ahead of us. Got a huge show coming up on November 27th. Uh, the Darren McCarty CBD Roll On presents Boiling Point 2. We're going to be crowning our inaugural. RPW Tag Team Champions, but not only just that, and you've all heard all the teams and all of the sponsors for the teams and all the good stuff and a little bit of death matches here and there. We have a killer main event that we're very excited for this one. Justin Kyle will be defending the World Heavyweight Champion against this man. He is part of the group of the Rejects. He is the Deathmatch Samurai this is Akira. Akira, thank you so much for taking some time out and talking with me. Yeah, man, not a problem. Uh, I was debating on whether going to the gym before or going to the gym after, and mm-hmm. a, a person I'm communicating with was like, charge your phone, do this interview, because then you don't have to rush it. And you can just go and not have to worry about it. And I'm like, yep, cool. And uh, yep. yeah, I got my whole – it said that it's not a uh, – video presentation it is not. no it because is all I, I have a great setup you do like i look really good <laughs> he does he does he looks smashing i got looks... that nice white light no yellow light i got the headset on mm-hmm. but yeah i'm here i'm uh, we're finally getting this Justin Kyle match, so that's interesting. <laughs> we were we were talking a little bit about setting it up, and we were going over like the 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 background of it. And and I will I will say that I I I'm I'm very happy that I helped like bring the idea to life. And I'm like I I've seen Akira a little bit here and there, a couple of death matches here and there. I saw you in person during uh, the death match circus, mm-hmm. uh, which is was huge for us and huge weekend for ICW No Holds Barred. Shout out to them. And I'm just like, does Akira do non death matchy stuff? And they're oh, like, yeah. yeah, we can we can make this happen. And the powers <laughs> that be made it happen. It's still funny to me that people. Uh... When like they realize that I actually do do like regular matches and I mm-hmm. like doing, I want to keep doing those, just because um, these people have still have that weird perception. Oh, he just only wants to play. I'm like, nah, man. Like, people watched my UW, my UWF five stuff on IWTV and they're like, wow, he's like a great shooter wrestler. And I'm like, yeah, please book me in more. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not doing this just just for fun. I mean, it's fun. Like, I'm doing it because I want to keep doing more. I want to, I want to show the balance because we're deathmatch wrestlers like we have to go we need to go out and show that we're just as good if not better than all the other wrestlers and we bring something unique to the table i.e we take our shirts off all the music ends and people see how cut up and scarred we are and they go uh what's wrong with that dude or with me they go oh what's wrong with that kid even though i'm like probably older than half the people that say that You have you you kind of suffer that I do because like I I kind of have like a natural ba- baby face but I'm oh, 35 yeah. so well, like well even if, if I have facial hair I still look I, I go from looking like I'm 18 or 19 to oh he looks like he's 22 like just out of <laughs> just going into college like that's I, I've I've seen myself with the beard I've had a beard a full facial hair and I'm never going back to that <laughs> no, no you don't you don't you can't pull it off or just like oh like it's it? just it if I did it everybody that knows me now would not recognize me or they'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's, it's a drastically different look. <laughs> I look like I'm, like I'm a church band leader. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. Uh, like an Asian, like a, a little Korean Japanese church leader, like at a hipster, at a hipster church. That's what it looks like. And I'm just, I'm never going back to that. That is a, that is a hell of a description. And yet I can sort of <laughs> picture it. You don't want to. <laughs> it, ain't, <laughs> it ain't good, man. <laughs> I, uh, also, shout out to Darren McCarty. I did not get to hang out with Darren at uh, the Deathmatch Circus because I was so get the stuff done, got to mm-hmm. go because I was so tired. <laughs> oh, that whole weekend um, was a, was a was a trip. It was a it was a fucking circus, man. It like, really was. With all the rain, all that shit. I mean, RPW had a great show, mm-hmm. long show, but a great show. The crowd we, was excited for it. <laughs> I that that was the biggest complaint. A lot of people said is like that, that show was long, and I'm like, well, but we had to. This was our like yeah, debut live streaming. Least, we got to throw everything out there. At least it was long, but it was entertaining. There's some yes. long shows that drag, and you're just like, I just want to fucking go home. Like mm-hmm. it was entertaining the whole way through. Fucking 
Hoodfoot and Pondo oh, was a God, fucking yeah. trip. Fucking Hoodfoot squirting blood on uh, the people in the front row was amazing. <laughs> and I'm if and I'm sitting there in the back laughing as it happens. <laughs> that, that was great because like I didn't have a lot of crazy matches that weekend. It was me and uh, Brandon. Yeah, and then it was uh, the the Bev and I. Yes. Yeah, that, I think that was it. Yeah, because um, but the matches I had were still fun and entertaining. But I got to really sit back and watch other people go nuts mm-hmm. which was uh kind of refreshing <laughs> to not yeah, be the yeah. one going out doing all the crazy shit right After- yeah it was a weekend of full crazy shit but like mm-hmm. a lot of it like it, it was like different levels of crazy shit yep it was uh it was it was just a great show it was a great weekend um it was really relaxed all things considered even with the rain uh crowd was energetic mm-hmm. uh sadika and mickey from icw oh. was I'm sitting there with Pondo, and Pondo's just laughing at everything. He's like, huh, that ain't me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Pondo, like, Pondo was a trip. Pondo, talking to Pondo was was amazing. And also, Pondo, like, talking to Hoodfoot. That was our previous episode. Uh, Pondo and- is uh, a wealth of knowledge, but he's also a wealth of comedy. And he does, and it's not like a wealth of comedy unintentionally. He's just that fucking funny. Yeah. And then Hoodfoot is just one of the most chilled. Like, I, I remember... Like when I first started three years ago, um, mm-hmm. Hoodfoot was one of the first guys that I ever met. And like we so we kind of been like we kind of rose up together in the past three years. So it's just like it's really cool to see what the stuff that he's doing now. And people are really high on him and the stuff that he brings to the table. And then like he's always been like huge fucking like he'll see me go, my boy, you're fucking doing the thing. And I'm like, I don't wear a do rag like you, though. I'm not as cool. <laughs> he wears, he's got that mile long fucking do rag. And I'm like. I'm like respect, bro. I, I I couldn't trust myself. I couldn't like, I couldn't l- let myself wear that and like drag it in the dirt like he mm-hmm. does. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I'd have to carry it. I'd have I'd have people carry it. You're <laughs> like, like a, going like, a like bridal- getting away wedding a bride. Yeah, yeah. like a bri- like a bridal train. <laughs> 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 That's how you get the kids involved and get them to love you. There you go. There you go, Hoodfoot. There's your free advice. You come out. You have the children pick up your pick it up and like follow you. Instant so the baby children, face. Instant. The, the, the children are one with Hoodfoot. It's like, uh, <laughs> I know he has the t-shirt of, of Candyman, but it's instead of having bees, he has, he has little worker children. <laughs> Hoodfoot's for the children. But, yeah, man. That's, I mean, that's half my shit. Fuck <laughs> and where's the kids at? What's up, kids? High five. High five. Where's the dog? Hey, bet the dog's hand. All right. Yeah. The ring. Kill people. Yeah. Everybody's smiling. <laughs> I I want to I want to go back a little bit of a point because I, I I really like that that you were like you were really excited uh, to do more non deathmatch wrestling yep. because like at the end of the day like your basic training is the 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 normal wrestling and correct oh, yeah. me if I'm wrong um but like you you'll, you'll learn how to take the bumps the the the, the lock up the moves and everything and then there's just a moment where you go okay I'm gonna go and do more you know, regular it was wrestling. A, or... It was a weird thing. So my mm-hmm. transition wasn't like everybody else. Of like they wanted to do death matches. Like uh, because people have asked me too. Like, uh, what about your yarder days? Like, I never yarded. It was never my thing. I mm-hmm. I never did it. You know, people. I wa- I always watch like the videos and stuff on like YouTube. And I was like in high school and college because you know that's what we all did. Right. Um. But I never did it. I I started training mixed martial arts. Then I started training ca- uh catch when I started training pro wrestling so like my background is like shoot wrestling that kind of shit people just see like my, it's funny because my catch coach will uh at jay grooms on twitter or at crossface killer on twitter uh he is uh he's my catch coach he trains down in kentucky mm-hmm. and he, he uh he, he'll always he'll tell his mma fighters that he trains down there he goes yeah uh one of my uh one of my students who ha- has one of the, has some of the best bridging in all of wrestling, like all of wrestling. He, and that's his thing. And he says, he's like, he's like, he has some of the best bridging in all of wrestling. He does it in glass. He has, the, he does these gnarly suplexes in glass. He'll show videos and the MA fighters will be like, what the fuck? And, <laughs> and he'll be like, yeah, I'm trying to get him to come down and train. It's just, he's like scheduling with him. is just stuck is hard because he's getting busier and busier. Right. Um, but like, that was my, my background. I start, and it was annoying because when I first got, got into it that's this is obviously before like the big indie boom that we're in now this was like 2018 is when i debuted it was in that time of like new japan's on the rise you know there was mm-hmm. no thoughts of aew or anything like that mm-hmm. um so there was this idea 
at least locally of, oh, you're a small guy. You can't do these certain things. I shouldn't do these certain things for you because I'm a big person or whatever. Even though like I was, I was the kind of guy where this is when I was lifting like Olympic, Olympic lifting. I was, I wasn't Shane Mercer lifting. Cause that's a whole different. That's a animal. whole like <laughs> that dude seeing him live at the, yeah. at our RPW show was insane. When he just bench presses, Justin Kyle, who's not a small potato in Ooh. any sense of the word, but motherfucker like, just press him over. You know, guys like O'Shea Edward, like I could mm-hmm. I get O'Shea up here for a German during a match. People are like, what the fuck? Uh, my, uh, Mike McFin- Mikey McFinnigan, mm-hmm. uh, uh, who is not a he's not a small dude either. No, I straight like this is like 2018. I pick him up, just deadlift him into a German off. People are like, what the fuck? And because I my, my stuff was always like, I um I will make you believe in me. Like there's a guy who is kind of canceled and who, who always told me of uh he's like i will make you believe in me by the shit that i do in there mm-hmm. and I, I people would not like to wrestle me just because they wouldn't want to play ball with me so i start kicking the shit out of them they, and you know they go oh, he hits me <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like i hate and then they were like well we don't want to we don't want to uh we don't believe you either i'm like okay so you don't want to wrestle me because i hit you too hard but you don't believe in me and it was just one of those things of like I would also I'd show up the shows and I never really got those opportunities that I like I still think back then I'm like if they give me the opportunities when I had like my long you probably seen the pictures of me with my fucking long hair the yep. trunks it mm-hmm. was a whole look it was a good look mm-hmm. but the, me now it, I don't look anything like that it's like, I look like a completely different person um, like I just it, those opportunities never happened I still think maybe I should have gotten some of those. Mm-hmm. But um, it just I just kept chugging along. I, I always had I always had that mentality of fuck you. I'm going to do I'm going to do things my way. Like people ask, like my Twitter handle, you know, the Akira way. Uh, I'm like, that's just like how I live my life. I'm going to do shit my way. Like, obviously, you're going to learn things. You'll change your perception of things. That's life. That's how, you know, you grow, develop. But generally, I've done everything my way. When people told me, no, I've said, fuck you. Watch me. I'm going to do it. And you're going to prove you wrong. And that's basically what happened. Uh, I got to, then I started doing death matches. Uh, I went to they said they couldn't be done from GCW. That's where mm-hmm. I saw Cologne and Kasai. Right. And uh, it all I that and from there I was with uh, Shane Mercer and Aiden Blackheart. Aiden got a call from the Rejects, and uh, this is also when like Bloodsport was kind of popping back in too. So I was like, man, I want to do more shoot wrestling shit, and people really weren't giving me the opportunity. Um, I've also had to learn a lot of patience just because it, like it all pays off later on for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just something I've, I've had to learn and that that's in life. Like you're not getting it now. Keep chugging along. You'll probably get it later. But then Aiden got a call from the rejects and said, Hey, we're going to Mexico. Aiden vouched for me, hopped in the car with the rejects. And Aiden went to Mexico, had the first death match in Mexico uh, of all fucking places. Of it, all you know, the it, places. It was, I would have, I am happy it happened there because I never felt more like a fucking superstar coming after that match. Fucking people giving me money, hugging me, fucking buying all my shirts and stuff. It was crazy. It all just spiraled from there. And and it was, people were still in, the, in that in mentality of, oh, Akira thinks he's, it was, it went from like, I don't believe you to, I, um, Akira thinks he's crazy, but he's really not. And now here we are. Two years later, and two years later, and everybody calls me a crazy asshole. <laughs> They're like, "Yeah, he just stabs himself. He just eats glass. You know, he just he he doesn't care." And I'm like, "You know, you could have hopped on this train two years ago." <laughs> and because because through the through that and me doing like my shoot wrestling stuff in uh, the death matches, like I'll throw like flying arm bars in there, and because I did that for an RP when I wrestled Tommy Vendetta the first time was an yep. RPW. Yep, and the first throw, boiling like, point. I was throwing flying arm bars and shit. People were like, oh, my oh, God. Excuse me, what? Devil's Night. Sorry, Devil's yeah, Night. Yeah, Devil's Night. Yeah, people were like, what the hell? They, um, that was my favorite thing was when people were like, yeah, it was like a, a wrestling match. Just glasses. I'm like, yeah, it's the same thing, guys. You just take out the glass. Um, but, but through that, that's when people started believing me anymore. That's when, you know, it started going like crazy as it's growing right now. I, I Me, a year and a half ago, just thinking about where I'm at now is wild. Um, then... 
that's how I got the UWFI stuff. That's how I'm getting more regular matches. I got my match with Simon Gotch. I mean, I had the match with Homicide in Atlantic City, which was essentially just like a Ring of, Ring of Honor match, mm-hmm. which I, I look back and I go, wow, I had a Ring of Honor match kind of with Homicide fucking. It's, ah, and, it's, it's and, it's, and it's so disappointing about Ring of Honor and what's going on right now. Yeah, but but I, I just think about it. I'm like, I had these, I had these opportunities. I did those things. And mm-hmm. Um, people are still seem shocked when I reach out for regular bookings. I'm like, no, I want to do those right? yeah. because if I, do, if I prove myself here, that means when I actually bleed, it means so much more. Um, mm-hmm. I, I have that mentality. Um, you, you probably talk to certain people that have that same mentality too, of making the blood mean as much as possible. Yeah. Cause like last year, I mean, I bled like crazy all through last year. If you just go to IWTV, you watch any almost any of my matches from last year. I'm bleeding like a fucking crazy asshole. Mm-hmm. But um, you talk to guys like Alex Cologne and others who also have this idea of making the blood mean as much as possible with storylines, with things like that. And it all cult- cult- like cultivates into what you're saying of like people see- like you're people seem shocked that I do regular matches. I'm like, yeah, I I do, and I want to use those regular matches to enhance the death matches so that we can make the most out of them because now everybody's wanting to run a fucking death match show. It's, it's every weekend now, essentially, which isn't a bad thing at all. No, it's just, um, I don't want to say oversaturated. I, I, just, I, I think when you have the stories behind those death matches, they mean more. And it's a little bit different with like an ICW where the stories are in the death matches themselves. Like that's cool, mm-hmm. but you can't have every promotion in the world fucking doing that because you're, you're, you're the world, you're going to burn us out. <laughs> no. And, and We're I human. feel like, <laughs> yes, yes. And I feel like there, there's a good combination. I, I, I saw a comment from uh, Neil diamond cutter on Twitter uh, recently that like during the heavy lockdowns, the death match scene was really what put a lot of pro wrestling on its back because of doing the outdoor shows, the the better social distancing, it was well, something very the unique and everything. On doing shows again, it was the mm-hmm. deathmatch shows. Like yeah. otherwise, nobody would have been running shows. They wouldn't have. Mm-hmm. Nobody would have been bleeding. Nobody would have been doing anything. It was the deathmatch boys, for better or for worse, that said, "Fuck it, we're running shows again." Because honestly, I like for us wrestling fan, like for in that time, people needed shit that they enjoyed. Yeah, man. Like even now, it's still a hard time. It's a still kind of like a soul sucking time. If you think about it, it's kind of depressing. Mm-hmm. And when those shows started happening, people were happy again. Like people were smiling. They were going to shows. They were having making memories, having a good time. I j- literally jump started my career by jumping off a fucking roof. Like I, <laughs> I can't complain about shows being started again. OK, right. <laughs> I had a crazy run last year, if you think about it, from Noel's Bar to up until uh, the match with Aiden Blackheart in December at ICW. Like, that was, uh, it was crazy match after crazy match after crazy match. Mm-hmm. And maybe I had one mediocre match, which was nobody's fault. It was just the guy, the guy lost a lot of blood and he couldn't go. Right. Sure happens. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you get to a point where, you know, you, there's only so much to, yeah. to, to run. Well, so. I mean, you, you, everybody knows the match that I'm talking about, but if you saw how much blood Alex Ocean bled the night before, like he was lying on the floor, bleeding everywhere. So the, yeah. like whatever happened the next day happened. But like the fact that he was even standing was a miracle. Mm-hmm. Like it's beyond like it's just one of those things that you look back at. You live, you learn, you move on. But like COVID, um, it's weird to say I'm th- I don't want to say I'm thankful for COVID, but I'm saying like with it became came out good things because you had the rise of these bigger independent shows again, like you have the beyonds, you had H2O ICW GCW is the biggest it's ever fucking been. RPW, Absolutely. RPW kickstarted because of COVID. We, we, AWR, we launched yeah. in the, in the middle of the pandemic. That's why our death match title, a rust belt has a, a guy in a gas mask in it because of COVID you had, I feel like, before everything happened because remember that that mania weekend all mm-hmm. those shows that were getting announced it was like i don't want to say it was bloated but like independent wrestling felt kind of bloated with a lot of the same shit right um but then COVID happened and everything ha- you know kind of went away people were taking mental time off they didn't want to go and then there was people that were like i'm gonna make it no matter what i'm not even including myself you had guys like hoodfoot you had the murdochs the reeds the um Dale Patrick's is of the Justin Kyles mm-hmm. who went out there and said, fuck it. I'm going to 
go wrestle. And now they're working almost every weekend now. It, it had to be. And, and you said like you didn't want to use your thankful COVID, but COVID opened our eyes and minds to thinking outside of the box in so many other aspects, including it wrestling. Show, it, it also showed really that deathmatch wrestling is the backbone of independent wrestling. You might not even think it, but like a lot of the guys in deathmatch wrestling, when you took away everything away last year, you had the Nick Gage, mm-hmm. you had John Wayne Murdoch. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say me, but you had like Ricky Shane Page, Alex mm-hmm. Cologne. You had all these fucking guys that held the independence with, with storylines, with their end ring work, with everything else. Um, I mean, you look back even to like, if it's the, it's not the Lucha. Like I'm not. This isn't bashing anybody style or anything. But it right. wasn't like the. It's not the Lucha guys. When you look back to the guys that are there, no matter what, it's the hard hitting, kick ass motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Um, it would be like so. Like for example, it would be the Samoa Joes. It would be the Eddie Kingston's. It would be the Brian Daniels. It's those kinds of guys are who would, uh, keep the backbone of rest of independent wrestling alive. If such a thing were to happen in you know like the mid two thousands. Mm-hmm. It would be like you would have those kinds of guys would be the staple. They would still be working. They'd be doing this shit every fucking weekend. It's incredible to to be in this spot now because like, it, and, and I, I try to explain to people like, uh, for lack of a better term, normies about you know pro <laughs> wrestling in general, and then you get into the world of deathmatch wrestling and go, yeah, you know, that I is even such a talk Reddit to, thing to say. <laughs> I, 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 it's, it's, but it's kind of true. It's, it, no, it's, you're not wrong. Pro wrestling is is very niche. Even even mm-hmm. my wife, who who is not a pro wrestling person who will be at the show anyway um uh who, who's not a pro wrestling fan she can enjoy it for what it is some of the entertainment everything but the moment it goes into the death match world she's like i'm out i don't understand it i don't get it i understand it. and and i and i get it to that mm-hmm. standpoint but like th- it's something oddly beautiful satisfying yes beautiful and satisfying I, but yes. i also believe it's when we as deathmatch wrestlers go into the regular professional wrestling world mm-hmm. and we excel in their environment mm-hmm. and people love us in that environment. Like I can go, like I have been to Chattanooga, Tennessee, maybe three times to wrestle, mm-hmm. but I know if I go down there, they're chanting for me. Um, and then they go, yeah, that we started watching your stuff at ICW and the people start. It's our job. Because like, people, some people are okay with deathmatch wrestling being a niche thing, which is cool. Like it's always going to be a niche thing. It's blood and guts. People, not everybody's going to love it, but we could be getting more out of it. Um, and it, what I'm saying is, when we go into the uh, regular wrestling world, we kick ass. Mm-hmm. Those people love us when we go and do those death matches, and we do them well, better than other people. You know, in like say like Deep South, who are just cutting fingers off. I don't care if it's a work; it's still fucking stupid. It's <laughs> it's right. stupid no matter what. And um, it was. But to, to work to the entire community, even though we're like, well, fuck, they worked us, but then it's, it's still, it's still, like it's, still stupid. Yeah, it's still stupid. Like it doesn't, no matter what, it it looks dumb, right? Uh, because nobody gives a fuck that you cut your finger off, even if you did. We just it, like our collection. Our collective thought wasn't, oh no, you're a great worker. What are you doing? It's like, oh, John Rare, <laughs> shrug, no, no shit. Who cares? <laughs> um, and that's the only airtime I'm ever going to give him. But uh, right. But like we get we get these people to watch what we do. And that was like my favorite thing about when I wrestled Tommy um, at the Devil's Night show was that people were like, holy fuck, that was a wrestling match. Right. It's because people still also have the stigma of it's just swing and shit. It's just, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's it's our job to show them that. No, it's changed. That's why you have guys like Alex Cologne who are at the peak of what they fucking do john Wayne murdoch the peak of what they fucking do mm-hmm. because they incorporate all the things that you like about memphis or lucha mm-hmm. or strong or uh shoot shooto like me um and that's why i like takeda so fucking great is because takeda incorporates every little bit of everything mm-hmm. into and you can watch his matches and go that was just a great pro wrestling match yeah the blood and the guts is just uh extra it's a, it's an extra co- co- coat of paint yeah, his match with Shuji Ishikawa from Big Japan for the heavyweight title belt. It's available on IWTV. If you want to watch a great professional wrestling match, even disregarding the glass, that uh, it's fucking wild. That, but that that's our job. 
Yeah, it's these hybrid people that will 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 outlast yeah. a lot of things, and you and know that's that's not even saying anything against because there's you know people will say oh hack and slash blah 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 I'm like there's still a place for those guys like you Absolutely. have to have you have to have those guys because they bring something different to the table mm-hmm. but you can't have everybody be that just like you can't have everybody that do lucha you can't have everybody do shoot wrestling because it's the best kinds of professional wrestling are styles clash matches which is what Justin Kyle and I is going to be because and and in its own weird way because Justin has a shoot has a shoot fighting background does. I have a shoe wrestling background. Mm-hmm. So you're probably going to see a little bit of that in there just as much as hard hitting. Like you'll see some technical shit that you'd be like, wow, was not expecting that at all. Um, that's the kind of fight that that's going to be. And that that's interesting to me. Like, cause you can even have like a, uh, this is going to be uh, for people that don't know. Uh, cause it's Sakuraba pride, UFC fame, professional wrestles in Noah. And, mm-hmm. but he also did a lot of professional wrestling for new Japan. He had matches with like uh nakamura with shibata with suzuki but you put him in there with kurt angle it's still technically a styles clash because they still wrestle differently right um the styles clash matches are the best kinds of matches just because you have different it's it's different kinds of uh artists coming together to make something in the ring um and that's the same with death matches because you have two guys that are just hack and slashers it's great for one match but if it's okay there's punching each other swinging shit and it's 10 matches of that. Do you want to watch that? No, no. you get, you get <laughs> bored of it real quick. Yeah. And, and, and I love like the, the people that who can mix it up, but you know, you're, you're, you're Josh cranes, you mm-hmm. know, you're Schwartzies, you know, and so much more like who can, you're Randy West. Who's, you know, I've seen her do death matches, but also tear it up with men and women. And, yep. you know, all uh, most of the people in our tournament in some sort of fashion can go in both realms. Yes. So it's Mickey just is another one. Mickey's is incredible. Mickey's a li- living legend, whether she wants to relate it or not. She is, you know, uh, you know, she, she's incredible. I remember next time. Yes. Oh, look, it's a living legend. Mickey Knuckles. And she's like, shut the fuck up. She'll fucking like, kill me. <laughs> if, if, if she found out that I said that she'll fucking kill. She's the nicest woman you'll ever meet. She'll fucking kill me. So nice so. that I threw a fucking TV at her. <laughs> you sure did. You sure fucking did. Oh, uh, that, that's still one of my, I got, I got a funny story. So uh, we all know who Tank is. We love Tank. We Tank love is, Tank. Tank. Tank is a sweetheart. God bless Tank. First, the first time I met Tank was uh, in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And he, I was like, he's like, hey, man, nice to meet you. And I'm like, hey, man, it's, it's finally nice to meet you. And he's like, hey, I love your fucking match with Mickey. But he's like, I cried when you threw that TV at her. I said, that motherfucker's <laughs> never throwing a TV at me. So now every time I see him, I'll go, hey, Tank, TV deathmatch. And he goes, <laughs> no. <laughs> he's like, I'll fucking walk out. He's like, I will finally no show a booking. And, I was, and he's like, I'll fucking throw a TV at you. And I and I'll always be like, Tank, but when you do it, make sure it's one of those TVs with the giant tube back end. So oh, God. It, it just lands on top of me and I just it just envelops me. <laughs> right. I'm dead. Then you get the eight, nine, throw the TV off. And, and he's like, Tank is like, if you threw that TV off you, if I did that to you, he'd be like, I just roll out of the ring. I'm done. <laughs> he's like, there's no killing this fucking asshole. <laughs> but like, it's, it, it's also crazy. Like the Renaissance that a lot of people are having with their careers. Cause you have Mickey who's back just as strong as ever, if not stronger mm-hmm. than even when she was on like impact. You've got guys like Tank, Insane Lane, Neil Cutter. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, like Reed and Murdoch and everybody else. It's it's wild to behold. Like the Wild West of professional wrestling is here again. <laughs> it's incredible, and it's going to be a great time. Saturday, November twenty seventh, twenty four sixty Blazer Road in maybe Michigan. It's Boiling Point Two, sponsored yep. by Darren McCarty CBD Roll On. Of course, we have our tag team tournament members only: the Rejects, uh, Casanova and Hoodfoot, Balking Season, Midwest Scum, and the Hollowed, all competing in a tournament. Of course, the World Heavyweight Title Akira will be taking on Mr. Justin. Kyle, uh, we also uh, meet Mountain brother. Brother is <laughs> brother is a beast. He's super nice, super chill, down to earth guy. Death. 
so the just intense when the bell rings. We also got a prickly situation death match with Randy West, Remington Roar, and a couple more other surprises coming up. So get your tickets now, ruthlesspro.com. I'm just gonna uh, say this right now: prickly does probably mean cactuses and fuck cactuses. So come watch that. I'm gonna be watching <laughs> in the back laughing. We have that. uh we haven't uh because I think by the time we I, I don't want to mention it quite yet because I think <laughs> by the time we drop this episode the match won't be announced quite yet, but our deathmatch title, the Rust Belt, will be online. Del Patrick will be defending it. Um uh and uh, I, I'm not gonna say the stipulation, I'm not gonna say the opponent, but it's gonna be a lot of fun and it's very ironic that uh, you were telling us the story about the television, and I'll just leave it th- at that. Um so but go see to- now I'm confused which one is it? It could be the short little angry lady, or it could be the sweet, gentle uh, Southern man. I don't know which one you're going with. I, I will. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you after the fact. It's, <laughs> it's all right. Ruthlesspro.com. Go check it out. We also want to thank all of our sponsors who are sponsoring tag teams, uh, who are sponsoring uh, the show, the Cherisec Chip Company, sponsoring the tournament, uh, Faces and Fields Podcast, Oxy Zero Design, Pack Rat uh, Pawn Shop, Pro Wrestling Edge, uh, Hiberian Belts, uh, uh, and so much more. So shout out to all of them and all the sponsors jumping on. It's going to be an incredible show to end the 2021 Akira. What are you excited for, for wrestling into the new year? We'll we'll leave it as the last question. Like what, what's all excited? What are you excited for? What are you ready for? Like, what do you want to see? Just tell me your thoughts about the wrestling world. Um, I mean, it's once again, we're in the wild west of, of indie wrestling. I don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to see more uh, deathmatch guys on TV. Just saying. I'd like to see like G Raver on Impact. Just saying. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, I mean, we got Nick on AEW. Get get like, I want John Wayne Murdoch and Reed Bentley on like NWA beat the fuck out of their tag teams there. That'd be Yo, great. That'd be, <laughs> I'd, uh, that'd be fun. That'd be yeah, a lot like, of fun. It's, it's weird for me because I, I mean, like, obviously, I want to go to like Japan and things like that. It's a real wild card of what's going to happen. Uh, maybe I'd like to be in Europe next year. Mm. Um, but I mean, I, I I did something that I've wanted to do for the past two and a half years, and I'm in uh, GCW now too. So it's just, it's pretty wild. It's, um, it's it's also war- uh, heartwarming to me to, to think about uh, when I was first at. They said it couldn't be done when I was a nobody. And then to Nat, like when I had did my debut at the Fight Club show, and I came out and everybody's fucking screaming for me, and I was not ready for it. I was like, "Don't!" I was like, "Don't freak out!" <laughs> I was like, "Oh, it's it just it's wild going from some guy that was like kind of known in the Midwest to everybody, like everybody, like fifteen hundred people in Atlantic City screaming for you. You're just kind of like, "Fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so I don't know. Um, I'd like to. On my, okay, okay, how about this? Um, okay. Next year, I would like to be wrestling full-time. All right. Um, that's, I would like to be wrestling full-time. I, TV is cool. I don't know who would want me. Like, I don't want to be like, I want to be on this promotion. I'll be on this promotion. I don't, I don't know. Um, if TV happens, that'd be cool. But uh, doing this full-time, uh, doing merchandising, doing streaming, doing the whole wrestling thing, everything that's involved full-time and going international and just doing this so I can take my dog everywhere. It's you'll an adorable nice, dog. So you'll get nice pic. You'll get nice pictures of Coda and like UK or something. Come on. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give him a nice wanting- baguette. <laughs> <laughs> just it's it's just coda travels the world and then just be yes, the whole profile oh, oh, dude, that, everybody be subscribing to the 25 dollar uh tier on my patreon right just want to see those pussy coda pictures all the time yeah. coda in france we'll get we'll get on the eiffel tower take a picture of him and he'll hate it because he hates heights Aww. he'll be like dad he'll be like dad get the fuck give me the fuck down here i'm like oh coda selfie gotta get the selfie <laughs> gotta go for the gram guy there's yeah there's like, with the patreon people want to see it I feel like it's a fucking such ex- good shit. It's you like an exploit. Do- it's like an exploitative producer. Like, nah, you, you want to be a star, don't you? You gotta take the picture on the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> oh, that dog I gets whatever it. he wants, though. Well, so. yeah, but oh, like I'm that, sure. That's that's kind of what I want, and but mm-hmm. I, that's what I was like to see is more like deathmatch guys on in more prominent roles. I like to see a uh, deathmatch guy have the IWTP title. I'd like to see them defend it in a death match i'd like to see 
all my friends succeed. Um, and that's one thing that I'm, I'm always, I always strive to be is if I can put other people over with whatever, what I'm doing, or mm-hmm. I can still support them. Like, that's great. Like that's one of my favorite things was last, was, uh, last year when I had that UW five match with Yoya. And after that match, he was, now he's like, and I'm like, fuck bro, calm down. <laughs> it's, it, like he was on blood sport. And I'm like, it's just, it's cool to see that. Oh, that's, Okay, no, I'll call this shot. I'll yeah. call the shot. Here we go. Uh, 2022. I want the fucking Death Samurai and fucking Bloodsport. I'm tired of people fucking hounding me over it and ask me about it. And I'm like, I want it. Trust me. And like, everybody know. everybody that asks me knows that's the thing that I fucking want. I want to come out to fucking fight to survive and fucking the blood, uh, blood sport show. I want to be doing that all the time because I love those fucking shows. People think people people say it's boring, and I'm like, it's the art of pro wrestling, man. Yeah, like it's, it's, just it's not... really it's really pro wrestling going back to its like roots. Yes. I'll, I'll say it like this: it is, it is that it's it's the jock. It's like the, the MMA guys would love it, uh-huh. but also the nerdy guys that love technical wrestling would love it. It's it's like the Dune of pro wrestling. <laughs> it's only for certain people. <laughs> I need to. I need to. I I watch the new Dune. Actually, I, love it. I, I, love I, it. I, I, so, okay. So I never saw the original and I never read the books. The original sucks. Uh, okay. Well, I, it I watch suck. It's not as, it's, it's not as faithful. And the director was, was, uh, you know, uh, he did fucking walk by fire. Oh, walk up. I what's it called? Uh, Twin Peaks. The guy that did Twin Peaks. Oh, okay. David, yeah. David Lynch. Yeah. yeah. David Lynch did that. And he didn't he did stuff for him where it didn't make sense. Like the, at the, okay. Two please pause at the end of the original movie. Right. On Arrakis, the place where there's no rain, there's no water. What does it do at the end of the fucking movie? It rains. Mm. He, he did that just for him. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I, this, this sucks. Uh, this where, whereas like watching blood sport, you have to, you watch for like the intricacies, the little technique shit. That's what Dune felt like to me because you're watching the little character move how their eyes glance back and forth how they interact with people the little character shit and that all adds layers to it that's what i loved about the new dune maybe maybe i need to rewatch it because i yes. watched it and i'm just like i visually looked good the acting was really good you have but to just focus something about the story or whatnot i'm just like i what like, yeah, it, it, I might also have a little bit of bias because I read the books. So when right. I see I see how it's interpreted and I'm I'm loving it because I'm like, oh, my God, everything's so fucking faithful. Right. Except for, OK, the weird spider thing. That's not in the book. Mm. The one with the fucking the creepy hands. Or yeah, she's, yeah, like, yeah. Get, she's like, get the fuck out. It's cool, but it's not in the book, but it's fine right. because. Yeah, but uh, it, it's. It's one of those things that's I, I enjoy works like even like Lord of the Rings, when it's like, you have to sit there and you see the little, the little nuances in the characters. Right. It's like watching the little nuances in wrestling. Um, that's what Dune felt like to me. It was like all these little things that are adding up. Um, like when you look at uh, the, uh, the Baron Harkonnen or Duke Harkonnen, uh, I'm sorry, Baron Harkonnen. I'm fucking, I'm a little a lopsy. Uh, <laughs> but, or like, uh, Duke, uh, uh, Duke of the Atreides, um, when mm-hmm. he's fucking Leto, when he's talking about the betrayals and stuff, or he's sitting there looking around, observing the situation, you can see you look in his eyes and you realize he's not just looking around. You go, oh my god, he, he is. He's real. Like he's going through like the steps of, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Like you go, he goes like, what's going on? To, wait a minute, oh fuck, wait a second, and then you know what I'm talking about? Thing in his back, he's going, oh shit, 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 and he can't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Like it, the whole movie was just like, uh, it's like you know how Game of Thrones was about like mistrust. That's what that yeah. entire it was. It was that 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 aura of I can't trust anybody. I don't know what's gonna happen, but something's gonna try to fucking kill me. That's that whole movie for me. Um, I would suggest watching it back again though, and just sitting there and just really taking it in. Like you have to be hyper focused, and, and I, I think that's probably if, why. I understand if people watch it and they don't get it because if you're not hyper focused on it, you're gonna miss it. It's like watching like Blade Runner. If you don't look at the little intricate things, you're gonna be like, okay, this movie looks nice, the soundtrack's great, but what else do I get out of it? If you, if you're not focusing on it, it's not. It's gonna go over your head. All right.
And that sounds pretentious as shit. Maybe it is, but that's just how the books are. That's like, because if you read the Dune book, it's a lot of political shit. It's a lot of uh, char- character and personal shit. And if you just like try to skim through it, it's, it's all just going to go over your head. All right. That, that, I think that's a fair assessment, to be honest. I and think it's really good. Honestly, I think it's going to be better when they release the DVD. Uh, the DVDs because from what I've from what I've read um, I don't really get into like uh, you know pop culture shit but uh, Villeneuve wants to do this wants this to be like his space Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. so he's going to do this, this one he's going to do the part two which is still book one then he's going to do the next book which is called uh, uh, Dune Messiah he's not going to do the, the third actual book he, they might because but but legendary is like all in on the dune stuff so they'll probably right. get some other actor but he wants to do those three as those three as a trilogy and if he wants to make to be like lord of the rings i'm like there's probably an extended cut in there somewhere of each mm-hmm. one that goes from like two and a half hours to four hours and i'm not saying i'm gonna get stoned and watch all those <laughs> at darren mccarty please send me your stuff <laughs> but i'm probably gonna get stoned and watch all those <laughs> I, I can dig it. I can dig it. Uh, Akira, if we want to follow you on social media or some of the other places uh, we can follow you, where do we do so? It is going to be at the Akira way on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. I am currently getting a store up now called DeathSamurai.com, mm-hmm. and that all that work is going to be done. Uh, all the t-shirts, all the designs are going to be done by uh, the group I've been doing stuff with called Stiff Blade. You've probably mm-hmm. seen my stuff on my Twitter. They do great yep. stuff. They do stuff for me, Masha Slamovich, and a couple other people. Um, and uh, I mean, it's gonna be those like those two sites and uh, Deathmatch Worldwide. Like those and, will be the three sites for my merchandise and uh, Patreon. Tw- yeah, and my Patreon, which is on, on my Twitter. Uh, it's just Death Samurai on. Oh no, it's I'm sorry, it's the Akira way. I have too many fucking things. It's <laughs> the Akira way on Patreon. I uh, got a couple different tiers. It gets a $25 tier. You do get to see pictures of Coda on Snapchat all the time. And it is a little bundle of joy. I love getting messages going. That dog made my day. It's not me that makes people's day. It's my fucking dog. Um, <laughs> you just get to see me on occasion. Um, and then I do the Twitch streaming at the exotic weapon. So go check them out. And of course, boiling point two. get your tickets. Now ruthless pro.com brought to Watch you by me Darren. Choke out Justin Kyle. Watch, watch Akira choke, choke out Justin Kyle. Darren McCarty CBD role presents Boiling Point 2, Saturday, November 27th at 2460 Blazer Road in maybe Michigan. Tickets are on sale right now, ruthlesspro.com. Of course, also follow the podcast on all major podcast platforms. Follow us on social media. Uh, follow us at Deathmatch Worldwide. Get some of the RPW merch and so much more, ruthlesspro.com. Calm. Akira, it's been a blast talking to you, getting to know you better and talking wrestling. Anything else you want to add? Nah, man, it was a great time. I, I felt like if you gave us like five hours, we'd just talk about nerdy shit all the time. Absolutely. We'll do it again. <laughs> I'm guys, all for it. You were talking about doing it and you're like, I kind of want to talk about it, but we're like, we're getting close to time. And I'm like, I could feel he's going to like he like we could probably talk about this for hours <laughs> we could we could we could but i also gotta work on some stuff this evening and we gotta get ready but and you're a busy gym, guy so. but yeah yeah so we appreciate it kira thank you so much